Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make YouTube thumbnails in Photoshop CC version 2017. So we're going to end up with something similar to this. And the first thing we're going to do is go up to the file menu, hit new, and open up a new document. So you'll notice in the new document window, uh, if you haven't already seen, that the new document window is quite a bit different than the previous versions. So we could select from our recent options HDTV 180p, which is actually, I would say, the preferred resolution for a YouTube thumbnail. You can use 720p as well, which would be 1280 by 720 pixels. Um, but you can also find that in film and video. So 1920 by 1080 pixels at 72 ppi HDTV. That's what we're going to go with. So just select that and hit create. And it's going to give you a document with guidelines already set up and a white background. So that's a good start. We can kind of see where we want to focus our content on in the center portion. It's better to have it there rather than the sides so that it's clear and visible. So this image off of Pixabay, I'm going to drag that onto our document. It'll take a second to load. And uh, you'll notice that it's scaled down a bit by default. But because it's a high resolution image, we can actually scale it to just about any size we want um, and have it be perfectly fine for this, uh, this thumbnail. So I'm going to position it somewhere in the middle. I think that looks pretty okay right there. And then I'm going to hit check to confirm it. So obviously, depending on what kind of video you're creating, you're going to have different thumbnails. This kind of background maybe would support something like a travel vlog since it's trees and nature. But you might also go with a solid color background or a screenshot from a video game. So from here I'm going to continue by using the text tool to type in some information. For thumbnails I'd probably recommend only having a few words on there. So maybe we'll call it travel vlog number 100. And we can center that. You can see that as you move the text it'll stop at the center, perfectly centered on our document. But honestly, a much better title for this might be something like the destination you're going to. So let's say Yellowstone Park. And as for the number 100, we'll put that in a, sec a separate text element over here. So number 100, and we can actually scale that up to a different size. Since it's only a few characters, we can easily make it something like 300. Put it in the bottom right hand corner and have this over here. Now, you can see that my uh, font is defaulted to Sego UI. That's what I changed it to. It's a font I like to use, especially bold. Um, you might want to play around with a different font. It really depends on what you're going for. I would recommend, though, you use something that's very clear and bold. Now, how are we going to get this text to show a little better with the background? You can see white and yellow don't really go too well together. There's a couple ways we could do this. Uh, one would be to change the background layer completely and make it, let's say, a black. It, now it's completely under the image. But how we can make that affect our end result is to add some opacity to the trees so we can darken it a bit effectively, make that something like 80%. Another option would be to create a new layer onto the text layers and drag a box around the text fill it with a color, and then just make that specific portion uh, partially transparent. So 50%, something like that. But for here, I'm going to drop that. I don't really like the way it looks. And I think it looks okay with it being a little bit darkened, only 80% opacity on the image. But let's actually add a drop shadow effect to these text elements. So. So in order to add some drop shadow to our text, I'm going to right click the text elements, go to blending options, and drop shadow will be at the bottom. So from here we can add distance and spread to our text to give it a black background right behind the text and effectively making the text itself stand out more in the document. If we increase the numbers, it'll become more visible. So I think 10, 10, and 10 looks okay here. So I'll hit OK. And in order to duplicate it, I'll right click on the text element, hit copy layer styles. We'll go over to the 100 and paste layer styles to give it the exact same effect. Maybe to make it a little bit more clear what's going on in the thumbnail, 
we'll call this vlog number 100. I'll center this and I'll actually reduce the size, let's say down to 200 or something like that. Maybe position it over on the right. Doesn't look too bad. Maybe we want to make this lowercase though. And you can keep playing around with the text, but the idea is to make it centered, very vis visible and easy to read. Now one last thing I'll show you guys how to do is to add a border to all of this. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to hit Control A with the rectangular tool selected so that we select this entire frame, everything in the image. And I'll right click it, go to Stroke. And we'll give it a stroke of, let's say, 30 pixels with maybe a dark red. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And that's going to give us a border on the edges of our image. But that's actually not quite large enough, so I'm going to hit undo and stroke it one more time. Let's say 100 pixels just to make it stand out a lot. That may be actually too excessive. But that's one quick way you can add borders into your image. And maybe we'll undo it one more time to get a more appropriate color. And here I'll actually do a color select of one of the colors in our document. Copy. Select everything again. Go to stroke. And well, actually it already has the color defaulted, but I'm going to make that a little bit brighter than what it was before and maybe change it a little bit closer to a yellow. Hit OK. Let's say 80 pixels on the border. Hit OK again. And uh, yeah, that's not too bad. And you can keep playing around with this a little bit more to get it perfect, of course. Just showing you guys the tools on how to make a decent thumbnail for YouTube. And lastly, we'll reposition this up towards the top. And there you go. That's basically the gist of how you create a thumbnail for YouTube videos inside our Photoshop CC 2017. I hope this video has been useful for you guys. So thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you all in my future content.